They say the days when you could go from high school to a high-paying blue-collar job are long gone. But there are places in the Northwest where those days still exist. That's if you're willing to work a mile underground. For gold and silver miners, it looks like boom times right now. Rising salaries, more job opportunities, even a recent layoff in North Idaho doesn't look like other layoffs. Jessica Robinson has this story on a job that's seen the reverse side of the economic downturn. Don Kochevar teaches at the tiny high school in the small North Idaho town of Mullen. He's the assistant principal slash basketball coach slash shop teacher. Hey, he's got flyers right there. Wait, turn it a couple of times. But lately, Kochevar has been questioning his career path. His students are parlaying the skills he teaches them in this industrial mechanics class into mining jobs. Some of them, in the first six, eight months, their salaries absolutely crush mine. Kachavar has taught here for 24 years now. He has connections at the local mine, so he's come up with a plan. You know, I've got nine more years to, so I can get my retirement here, and then when I retire, I'll probably go to see if they'll hire me. Hopefully I won't be too old. So your retirement plan is to go work at a mine? Well, yeah, I've been in teaching. <laughs> I need to have a retirement plan. Joking aside, the price of silver suddenly makes that plan viable. Mining companies are grasping for workers, snatching up high school students as soon as they're old enough. One of those who's been courted by local mines is Kochevar's son, Hunter. Can I start it? Fire it up. He's in this shop class, too. It is a small school. But Hunter Kochevar has a different take from his dad's. Crew bosses, they said that they can get me jobs for, like, the summer when I turn 18, but I don't want to risk it. You don't want to risk it. The cave-ins and everything kind of scared me. And there's the flip side. Mining salaries can near six figures, but that compensation comes with hazards. Just a mile from this high school is the Lucky Friday Mine, a silver mine that last year saw a series of tragic accidents. Not long after I spoke to Don and Hunter Kochevar, the company that owns the Lucky Friday announced it would have to shut down for a year to comply with a federal safety order. Now, the closure is expected to be a major blow to North Idaho's economy, but the 250 or so laid-off workers, they have their pick of jobs if they're willing to relocate. So says Sarah Lampson of the Idaho Department of Labor. I'm surprised. The calls are coming in, and if they're qualified and have the mining experience, they definitely can get work. Yeah, hang on a second. My phone is ringing. <laughs> My name is Nick Tompkins with Newmont Mining Corporation. I'm the director for talent acquisition. Denver-based Newmont Mining was one of three mining companies holding recruitment fairs on the same day in Idaho's Silver Valley. Two were at the same hotel. All of them were vying for laid-off Lucky Friday workers. We've had quite a few people come through to talk to us, and we're very interested in talking to as many more as we can. Numbers from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics show metal mining has enjoyed a steady employment growth during four of the last five years, often around 10 percent. And remember, this is during a time period when most economic charts point downhill. Again, Newmont Mining's Nick Tompkins. It's been a growth period for us. Instead of lowering uh, bonuses upping insurance costs, reducing benefits to our employees. We've done exactly the opposite on every one of those. Just recently, President Obama's Jobs Council report identified mining as a key area for U.S. economic growth. Tompkins says entry-level mine jobs can pay $50,000 a year, even for someone right out of high school. A 19-year-old kid, that's a lot of money. That's Brandon Farman, and he is 19. He took a different route than Hunter Kochevar, the high school student we heard earlier. Farman graduated from Kellogg High School last spring, and now he's a miner at the nearby Galena Mine. I don't know, everybody thinks they're going to be claustrophobic down there, and it's really not that bad. Farman has cuts on his arms and a few blackened fingernails from work underground. He's aware of the inherent dangers. Everything down there is a lot bigger, and nothing gives down there. The only thing that's going to give is your body. Farman made a deal with his grandmother. After a few years in the mine, he'll go to college. But that may be a hard sell. Farman has just bought himself a snowmobile. Meanwhile, he says his friends come home from college broke. Asking mom and dad for money and stuff, you know, that sucks. I'd hate that. <laughs> and then, like, a lot of them keep asking me how much I make, and they'll be telling me how much they're going to be making, and I'm like, yeah, you're going to have ways to go to catch up to me. Farman says he'd like to make a hundred grand by the time he's 21. That may depend on a couple of things, some hard days underground, and the price of silver staying high. I'm Jessica Robinson, reporting.